Luke 5 20 when Jesus saw their faith he said friend your sins are forgiven the Jesus forgiveness what does it entail what does it mean what does it cover thank you father that through Jesus you forgive and through Jesus you love us be our speaker our teacher our guide our light our healer we seek you O God in the name of Jesus your son our Lord our Savior and friend the Jesus forgiveness is hardly understood by many people who profess faith in Jesus Luke 5 17 one day Jesus was teaching and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there so some listened to find fault like in this case and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick napakaraming may sakit napakaraming nagdurusa napakaraming nahihirapan at ang pagpapakilala ng Ama kay Jesus bilang tunay niyang anak ay binigyan ng kapangyarihang magpagaling immediate nasasagot agad ang pangangailangan ang hirap na tutugunan ang pagdurusa maging ng katawan at ng espiritu na iibsan the Jesus ministry is from God and in this case it is validated by his power to heal the sick Luke 5 18 to 19 some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus Kawawa ang mga tao, kahit manually, bubuhatin nila yung mahal nila sa buhay na may sakit, dadalin kay Jesus, dahil buong buhay, naghahanap sila ng lunas, wala naman silang natagpuan. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. Sobrang puno ng tao ang bahay, hindi maipasok ang may sakit, buhat-buhat pa. Dinala sa bubungan, binakbak ang bubong at pinadaos-dos sa pamamagitan ng buta sa bubong ang pasyente. Luke 5.20 When Jesus saw their faith, He said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. Katakataka, hindi yung sakit agad ang pinagtuon na ng pansin ni Jesus, kundi yung pagpapatawad sa kasalanan ng may sakit. Forgiveness of the spirit before healing of the body. So here we see that Jesus prioritizes spirit before the body, spirit over matter. And the thought of the patient that he is healed of his spiritual disease could be the power through which his body could be healed. Jesus is demonstrating a very important reality, thought over physical matter. Faith, knowledge, knowing that he had been healed would translate into the healing of his body. And here, faith is equated to being forgiven. Faith leads to being forgiven. The person did not even have to confess. The person did not have to make a big drama about his life, his sin, his past. The faith in Jesus was enough for Jesus to grant forgiveness. Walang drama-drama to. Yung nananalig ka kay Jesus, ni hindi mo na kailangan pang magtapat and go through all the motions of all the sins that you have done in your life because God knows. But remember, this is a new dispensation. This is a new time, a new period. The old period that ended. Na hindi na issue lagi yung kasalanan, hindi lagi kasalanan ang laman ng isip ng tao, hindi laging paglabigay ng mga offering para patawarin kasi ibinigay na ang kapatawaran sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay kay Jesus. Kaya kahit tayo, naging habit na rin natin tuwing lalapit tayo sa Panginoon, laging kasalanan ang laman ng utak natin, patawarin mo ako sa aking kasalanan, masama ako, hindi ako karapat dapat. We glorify the negative effects of sin. 
Tapos sasabihin ng Diyos, Teka, 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 ano pinag-uusapan natin marumi ka? Hindi ka karapat dapat. Hindi ba one time, big time, lumapit ka na sa akin through my son Jesus? At pinatawad na kita one time, big time? Bakit yung magkikita kita tayo, ang inuungkat mo lagi kasalanan na parang walang naganap na pagpapatawad at paglilinis? Eh, paano po lagi naman kung nagkakuna mga pagkukulang araw-araw, mga pagkukulang-pagkukulang, kasama na yon sa pinatawad. Kaya hindi natatanggal ang kaligtasan pag nagkamali ka, nadapa ka. Hindi lisensya para mag-abuso ka. Pero yan ay para ka maging mapagpasalamat. Nabuti na lang, wala sa performance ko, hindi sa performance ko nakasalalay ang aking kalinisan, kundi sa paglilinis ng Ama sa pamamagitan ni Jesus. Kailan kaya natin maintindihan ito? Kalahating paa, isang paa natin nandun sa mga laws na laging tayo inuusig, at isang paan natin nandun sa grace ng God through Jesus na tayo pinatawad na. Tapos, pagkakaliwa yung inihakbag mo, nasa kasalanan mode ka. Pagkana, nasa forgiven mode ka. Kaya matanggal, bumalik, matanggal, bumalik ang kaligtasan. Kaya walang tigil lang ka. Uusap tungkol sa kasalanan, batuhan, silipan, paghuhusga. Na parang hindi pa pinawi at inalis na ng Diyos ang issue na yan. Ang issue na ngayon, ang kabutihan ng Diyos, ang kabahitan ng Diyos. Kaya puro tayo pagpapasalamat at pagpapagaling. Pinagahalo-halo kasi natin yung mga teachings ng old law that condemns us in the teachings of God through Jesus that justifies us. At any given moment, isa dun yung nagahari sa ating utak. Kaya marami sa ating laging lito, divided, maging ang pananampalataya. Kaya nandun yung merong joy of salvation, nandun merong fear na naman, paulit-ulit. But faith leads to being forgiven. Not a 100%. Moral uprightness. Salamat ganun. Kasi kung hindi ganun, nandun pa rin tayo sa old mode. Para namang hindi nangyari si Jesus. Ito ang isa sa mga pinakamalaking challenges sa mga Kristiyano eh. Yung hindi lang maging Christian, kundi maging Jesus believer and Jesus follower talaga. Because the word Christian, over the years, had assumed so many other meanings that are on Jesus. That's why many Christians kill each other in the name of God. Many Christians go to war with each other in the name of God. And Jesus yun. Kaya dapat pati yung word na yan, yung label na yan, salain through Jesusness. Balik sa kwento, Luke 5.21. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Blasphemy, ha? Blasphemy only means believing or thinking outside of the accepted teaching or dogma. Hindi lahat ng blasphemy masama, ungodly or evil. Ang blasphemy, ibig sabihin lang, pag-iisip, paniniwala, o pagtuturo na labag sa traditional na paniniwala o katanggap-tanggap sa nakararami o sa makapangyarihan. Dahil ito nga si Jesus, tinawag na blasphemer eh. Blasphemous daw ang ginagawa niya. Pero dito, si Jesus ang tama. Hindi lahat ng nililabel ng mga religion na blasphemous, masama nga yun. Si Jesus nga, tinawag na nagbablasphemy. Blasphemy only means, hindi ganyan ang ating nakasanayan at tinatanggap na katuruan. So, blasphemy is thinking outside of the box. Of the accepted box, the box imposed by the religiously powerful. So, sabi nila, blasphemy ang ginagawa ng Jesus na ito. Who can forgive sins but God alone? The answer to their question should have led to the validation of Jesus. If it is God alone who could forgive sins, and Jesus forgives sins, then He must be of God. He must really be who He claims to be. He must really be the Son of God. Now, traditional teaching could label anything new to the ears, anything not readily understood. Traditional teaching could label the words and deeds of Jesus and even Jesusness as blasphemy. Kaya kahit ngayon, after 2,000 years of Christianity, na nadagdag na ng kung ano-ano mga katuruan, nalilito na kung old ways, Old Testament laws ba, o the grace of God through Jesus, Kahit ngayon, Jesusness could be labeled by many as blasphemous. Hindi naman katakata kayo eh, kasi si Jesus ga mismo, 
tinawag nilang nagbablasphemy. Luke 5.22 Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Bakit nyo iniisip na nagbablasphemy ako? Why do you think that way? Why do you misjudge so quickly and so easily? Why do you instantly decide that what you do not understand is wrong? Why do you instantly decide that whatever thought is not within your tradition is evil? Kaya pati si Jesus, the Son of God, tinawag nilang Son of Belzebub, anak daw ng Diablo. Pag hindi nila naintindihan, Diablo na agad, demonic na agad. Luke 5.23, sabi pa sa kanila ni Jesus, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, which I have just said, or to say, get up and walk. Alimba, mas mahirap. Ito yung lumpo. Sinabi ko, your sins are forgiven, and you're offended. Eh kung sabihin kong get up and walk, ma-offend kayo? Alimba, mas mahirap gawin sa dalawa. Jesus equates being forgiven with getting healed. And here is a very important lesson in the story, mga kapatid. Jesus equates being forgiven, meaning being balanced with getting healed. Kasi kung may kasalanan ka, at alam mong kasalanan yun, at totoong kasalanan yun, guilty ka, hindi ka makatulog, nagdadalawang loob ka, natatakot ka, magkakasakit ka talaga. Mind over matter. Ito ngayon yung mahirap. Guilty ka sa isang akala mo'y kasalanan, hindi naman pala. Kasi marami silang inaakala no na puro kasalanan, hindi naman pala. Itinuro lang sa kanila mga religious leaders para madali sila makontrol. O kailangan talaga ng lipunan nila nung oras na yon, kailangan ng kanilang tribo sa panahon na yon. Kaya minasama para huwag mong gawin, pero na-oversimplify, naging masama na for all time, for all people. Tapos nagagawa mo, kasi yun ang natural mo, yun ang kahit pilitin mong daw, hindi gawin na yun ang nangyayari. So ano mangyayari sa'yo? Lagi kang guilty. Laging hati ang iyong loob. Lagi kang takot. At ang pinakamabigat sa lahat, hindi naman pala dapat. Dahil imbento lang ng mga pari na ipinagbawal, hindi naman Diyos na nagbawal. Tapos guilty-guilty ka dyan. Pagkatapos lagi ka nang uusig ng iba, ang gulo-gulo nyo, nag away kayo sa bagay na di naman pala dapat to kill or die for. At nagbibigay sa atin ng sakit sa katawan, ang lahat ng uri ng sakit sa isip. Ang lahat ng uri ng imbalances. Kaya in ni Jesus ang pagpapagaling sa pagpapatawad. Hindi lahat ng sakit eh dahil may kasalanan o guilty. Kasi yung iba talagang very clinical, may germs talaga. Pero marami, tinablan ka ng mga germs, tinablan ka ng mga kung ano-ano. Kasi ang baba ng panlaban ng inyong naturalesa because you are psychologically imbalanced which affects your bodily processes. So sabi ni Jesus, kahanga-hanga ang pananalig mo. Pinapatawad na ang kasalanan mo. Which follows na gagaling ka na. Kasi ang nagbibigay sa inyo, sakit na yan, yung utak mo, na either guilty ka at dapat ka talaga mag-guilty, o guilty ka sa hindi mo naman dapat ika-guilty, but nevertheless, guilty ka pa rin. Kasi ang teaching sa inyo ng relihiyon is to be guilty about everything. May sakit ka tuloy. Sabi ni Jesus, alin ang madali? Sabihin kung pinatatawad na siya o pinagagaling siya. Luke 5.24 But I want you to know, that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Pinoproblema niyo ang pagpapatawag ko ng kasalanan? To forgive sins is to heal. So para pa sa tunayan ko sa inyo na meron akong kapangyarihan, karapatang magpatawad, pumunta na tayo sa part 2, yung bunga ng pagpapatawad, yung paggaling. Kayo, kayo mga priests sa temple, kayo mga Pharisees, kayo mga teachers of the law, turo kayo ng turo ng turo sa mga tao ng kasalanan nila at kung paano sila mapapatawad. Turo kayo ng turo ng walang katapusang offering, walang katapusang pagbibigay ng mga animal sacrifices. Me, napagaling na ba kayo 
sa turo na yan. Ang dami sinasabi ni Jesus dito pag nanamnamin natin yung said and the unsaid. If you're going to read between the lines. Sabi niya, alam niyo, ang pagpapatawad leads to healing. Araw-araw, nag-o-offering ang mga tao sa inyo para sa kapatawaran, may nahil na ba? At para malaman ninyo na tunay ang kapangyarihan kong magpatawad, pues, pumunta tayo sa part 2. Pagalingin natin. John 5, 24-25 So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. To drive home the point, Jesus did what seemed to be the more difficult thing as far as the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were concerned. Kasi sa kanila, madaling magsabing, pinapatawad ka na ng kasalanan mo, sangala ng aking office, ng aking costume, ng aking rank, ako'y representative ng Diyos, sinatanggap ko yung mga offering mo, pinapatawad na kayo. Madaling sabihin yun, pero wala namang proof na tumalab. Sabi ni Jesus, let's go to the proof which none of you have the power to do and to give. Sabi niya, bumangon ka. Bit-bitin mo yung higaan na dating hinihigaan mo lang at ikaw ang binibit-bit at umuwi ka na. Resume your life. Get a life. Immediately, he stood up in front of them. Verse 25, took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. Ano pang masasabi mo sa ganyang klaseng eksena? As you were already forgiven, now, reap the side effect of that forgiveness. Get up, you are healed. Result, the forgiven and the healed person praises God. Yung mga teachers of the law, yung mga Pharisees, will they praise God? No! Mag-iisip sila na ng iba na namang problema ang ibibigay kay Jesus. Sarado ang utak nila. Hindi natuturuan ang saradong utak Kahit kung magpabalibalin, kung magpasirpo-sirpo, kung magpatalon-talon, pasayawin mo ang mga bundok, hindi sila makikinig. Nagtuturo tayo para doon sa mga bukas ang isip, hindi para sa mga sarado. So huwag kang mapipi, huwag kang umanas, o bawasan ang pagtuturo mo for the sake of the sarado dahil baka sila magalit sa iyo, baka kanila i-condemn. Hayaan mo sila, nagtuturo ka para doon sa nakabukas, para matanggap nila ang pagpapalang inilaan sa kanila ng Diyos na handa nilang tanggapin. Huwag na huwag mong isasara ang tibig mo ng pagtuturo ng mga pagtuturo ni Jesus, ang kanyang pag-ibig, ang kanyang pagpapalaya to please the Pharisees, to please the teachers of the law. They will never be pleased. Luke 5.26 Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. Something that never happens in their daily activities at the temple. Five times a day they prayed there. Mark 1.27 The people were also amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. Nando ng pag-asa ng mga paralitiko Nandun ang pag-asa ng paralyzed by their body that were made sick, by their sick spirit that was made sick by their guilt, by the law, the new teaching of Jesus, the teaching that has authority, the teaching that has results. Kaya yung mga natuturoan talaga ng Jesusness, they come to terms with the reality, they get to apply the love of God to their insufficiencies and deficiencies and imperfections and they become clean not by their performance but by their faith in Jesus they end up praising God they lift the beds on which they were being carried and they go home resume a life get a life nangyayari yan physically emotionally spiritually lahat ng tao paralyzed pero hindi physically mayroon mga tao paralyzed emotionally Hindi sila makatanggi sa ayaw nilang tanggihan. Hindi nila magawa ang gusto nilang gawin. May kumokontrol sa kanila para sila mga lumpo. Hindi sila makalakad. Hindi nila mapuntahan ang gusto nilang puntahan. Control sila ng dito ang taong iyon, ang taong ito. Wala silang laya. Pero ang tunay na tumatanggap ng pagpapalaya ni Jesus, kumikilos, gumagalaw within what Jesus has allows. At napakarami nun. 
Kasi kung ikukulong mo lang ang sarili mo within what Moseness allows, ang liit ng mundo mo. Lagi kang mali, lagi kang kulang. The new idea is that Jesus forgives sins and Jesus is of God. And the new teaching is proven right by the miracle. That miracle happens to every believer whether or not it is physical paralysis or emotional paralysis or spiritual paralysis. The end is you get to become mobile. You move, you become free. And you praise God in the process and all through it. Mark 2, 15 to 17 Isang parallel illustration. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, and Levi was a tax collector and a sinner, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. Pag nag-Bible study ka sa bahay ng banal, puro banal din ang dadating. Oh, hindi lumaki ang kingdom of God. Pag nag-Bible study ka sa bahay ng isang makasalanan, so to speak, isang controversial, isang outsider, yung mga katropa din na magdadatingan. And you extend the kingdom of God. Pag ang lagi mo lang kasama, yung mga religyoso na, ang isasama din yan, religyoso rin, hindi dadami ang napapalaya ng Diyos. Si Jesus marunong, He was socializing. Getting involved, nakikisangkot siya sa mga puwera sa lipunan, sa mga latak, yung mga hindi isinasali sa church, yung mga nilalait, yung lagi na lamang na nililibak, nandun siya. It was the sinners, the rejects, the victims of persecution by the religious that followed Jesus in great numbers. Ang mga tunay na nagsamahan at nagsunuran kay Jesus, hindi yung mga religyoso. Yung mga biktima ng relihiyon. Yung mga biktima ng pang-uusig, pangungot niya, pagpupwera ng relihiyon, nakakita kay Jesus ng kakampi. Nakakita kay Jesus ng pag-ibig ng ama ng nasa langit na hindi nila nakikita sa mga relihiyoso. So, pag nandun si Jesus, at is silang magpunta. Mga church people, at is ba sa inyo, yung mga kamag-anak at mga kaibigan na hindi nag-church? O pasong-paso sa inyo? O talagang sinisildihan nyo sila kaya tuloy na papasok? That's not the style of Jesus. That's the style of the Pharisees. Verse 16, So si Jesus ay nandun sa bahay ng isang makasalanan, nagdatingan ng mga kapwa makasalanan, at sila ay namamahal ni Jesus, nalilinis ni Jesus, natuturuan, when the teachers of the law who were Pharisees saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? The question should be, why not? Para ngayon yung mga kristyano ng mga church bully, makita ka sa mall, may bakit yan ang kasama niya? Diba? Nakita niyo ba yung kasama ni sister? Ganito, ni brother, ganon? Sabi niya, sino bang magiging kasama ni Jesus kung nagmoling siya? Sa palagay niyo kaya, kabarkada niya yung mga conservative. Kasama niya doon sa food court, yung mga banal-banalan. Nangyari na yan noon. Ang nakakapagtaka, bakit pa ulit-ulit na nangyayari pa ngayon na parang walang Bible na mababasa mo naman? Sabi niya, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? The religious leaders wouldn't do a Jesus, obviously. Hindi nila mamahalin, lalapitan, sasamahan ang mga iniisip nilang marurumit makasalanan. 17. On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Paano mo tatawag yung sinner kung yung activity mo sobrang banalang dating? Sobrang churchy ang language, churchy ang tugtog, churchy ang lahat. Ang narating lang doon, yung mga church people already. Sabi niya, hindi naman kayo. Kung banal nga kayo at malinis, hindi kayo ang sinadya ko. Hindi niyo ako kailangan Kasi nagahari-hari na kayo. Boss na kayo eh. Kayo na yung kinakatakutan ng mga sinner. Kayo yung nag-judge. Kayo yung nagpupwera. Para kayong mga konsino. So hindi nyo ako kailangan. Pumunta ako doon sa mga 
kawawa, kinakawawa, nagtatago sa dilim, inuusig, nililibak ng reliyon. Sila ang pakay ko. Sila ang minamahal ng ama. At gusto ng ama mahalin ko. Kasi hindi sila minamahal ng religion. A doctor calls the sick. I call the sick. Therefore, I'm a doctor. A doctor calls the sick. You do not call the sick. Therefore, you are not doctors. You are judges. Mahalagang maintindihan niya. At sunod pa ni Jesus sa Luke 19.10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So Jesus came to seek and call sinners who are the sick, the condemned, the outsiders. Alam nyo nun sa kanila, may sakit ka, may ketong ka, marumi ka, ay naku, walang hospital para sa inyo. Itapong kayo lahat sa labas ng community. Baka mahawa pa kami. Kadiri kayo. At mamamatay din kayo anyway, madibilis. Kasi may sakit kayo, so itatapon ka. Ganun din ang trabaho ng mga religyoso ngayon ha. Pag ang sa tingin nila, may sakit ka, marumi ka, ayon sa kanilang pananaw, itatapon ka. Kunwari, gagamutin ka ka, hindi naman talaga. I-judge ka lang, ililabel ka, at ipopwera ka. Jesus came not to condemn, but to save sinners from slavery to sin. And that slavery could be, yes, totoong sin, hindi lang yung sin na sinasabi ng mga Pharisees, kundi sin din according to the Father in Heaven. Meron naman talagang ganun. But Jesus came to deliver people from addiction to sin. From slavery to sinful living. Yun talaga ang nangangailangan ng lifestyle change. But Jesus also came to save sinners from the punishment of sin, from hell. So kung nakay Jesus ka na, dapat tama na yung usapan ng mga hell-hell na yan. Tapos na yan. Jesus saved you for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That's why salvation is eternal. It is free but not cheap. Therefore, it must not be abused. The freedom must be used to follow Jesus and to be like Jesus, not to defy the teachings of Jesus. Jesus came to save sinners from the result of sin, and in this case that we're looking at today, sickness. Living wrongly leads to sickness. Maraming ganong sicknesses. Lifestyle lang ang dahilan. Disagreement within the mind and the heart leads into sickness of the body. But Jesus came to save sinners also from the burden of sin, especially guilt. God remembers that we are dust. So when you remember that you are dust, be thankful that God remembers that you are dust. Hide in the shadow of God's love. Bask in the light of God's care and get out of the shadows of guilt. Pero hindi ang ginagawa kasi ng mga Pharisees, pag guiltihin ka lagi para mag-offering ka na naman, para makontrol ka na naman, yung mga Kristiyano na puro guilt dahil sa kanilang imperfection, para namang hindi nyo tinanggap si Jesus. Unawain natin yun. Matuto tayo mag-enjoy ng grace, undeserved love, undeserved gift, undeserved kindness of God. Doon ka lang magkakaroon ng peace. When you come to terms with yourself and you are freed from the burden of fear, the fear of punishment, the fear that the righteous will always inflict on the unrighteous. Laging takot, takot, takot. Laging matakot ka sa Diyos. So sabihin naman Diyos, bakit may pinapanakot niyo ako? Hindi ba I sent Jesus? To be the personification of my truth and my love? Bakit niyo ako ginagamit na panakot? Para padaliin ang pagdidisiplina sa inyong mga anak? Para padaliin ang pananakot sa inyong mga asawa, sa inyong mga kapit-bakay? Ginagamit lagi ang Diyos. Kaya pag may mga malalaking kumpanya, lalo nung araw, i-invite nila ako mag-Bible sa sa mga empleyado, nililinaw ko. Hindi niyo ako gagamitin para yung mga empleyado niyo maging productive sa trabaho, para maging masunurin, para makontrol niyo, ha? Magtuturo ako na gusto kong ituro. At kung minsan na tinuturo ka pa sa mga empleyado, o, oh, pinapasweldo ba kayo ng tama dito? Lumulubog sa upuan yung may-ari ng kumpanya. Ilang araw ang off you dito? Minabayaran ba kayo ng overtime? Siyempre, hindi na ako naiimbita ulit. 
Wala naman utuin ko na utuin yung mga empleyado para yung employer sumaya. At bigyan ako ng love gift. I will never permit the words of God to be used that way. Because Jesus was sent to set people free. Actually, yung mga empleyado na masaya, yung empleyado na well-paid, yung mga empleyado na magandang tato mo, lagi lang yung nagiging productive. Pero kung mong gamitin yung word of God na panakot para sila makontrol. Hindi lang yan sa mga workplaces, kahit sa pamilya. Yung mga bata nga, hila-hila nung nanay. Ayan na si pastor. Bakit yun ba ko pinapanakot sa anak nyo? Para love kayo, tas ako hate. Di ba? Yung huwag natin ipanakot ang Diyos. Kasi ang Diyos, hindi nananakot. Minamahal tayo ng Diyos. Gusto niya maalis yung fear natin. Because only in the climate of non-fear can we bloom and blossom as persons that God would like us to be. And very importantly, brothers and sisters, Jesus came to save sinners from exclusion. Diyan magagaling ang mga Pharisees. Diyan magagaling ang mga Kristiyano kahit today. They always exclude people that they think are not holy enough. Nagsiserve ka na, balitaang may kasalanan ka, talsik ka. May ginagawa ka sa buhay mo na hindi nila gusto, talsik ka. Pwera ka. Pagtutulong-tulungan ka, dyan magaling ang mga Pharisees sa exclusion. But ko, Jesus cultivates a culture of inclusion. Kaya lahat ng pwera, yun ang welcome sa kanya. Yung babaeng dinudugo, bawal niyang makitungo sa kanya. Pero hinayaan niyang hawakan yun, laylayan ang kanyang damit, at gubaling yung babae. Yung mga ketongin na hindi pwedeng lapitan ng tao, babatuhin nga ng tao pag nandiyan yung ketongin para lumayo. Ang mga ketongin, may utos na. Kailangan sabihin nyo pag may tao, unclean, unclean, I'm unclean, para kalayuan. Labelan mo ang sarili mo para kaipwera. Yan ang mga hinipo ni Jesus. Yan ang mga dinayo niya. Yan ang kanyang pinuntahan at sinadya. Hinawakan, hinipo, minahal. Tapos ang mga kristyano, baligtad. Kailan kaya tayo magiging maka Jesus talaga? John 1.29 Si John the Baptizer, ang daming sumusunod sa kanya at nakikinig kasi kakaiba rin yung turo niya. Wala sa labas ng templo, nasa mga ilog-ilog, nasa mga gilid-gilid. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is loaded with meaning. Si John na pinaniniwalaan ng marami, ginamit niya yung credential niya para ituro yung mga naniniwala sa kanya sa tunay na dapat tingnan si Jesus. Sabi niya, huwag sa akin sa tumingin. Ayan si Jesus, sa kanya kayo tumingin. He is the one who takes away the sin of the world. How does Jesus take away sin? By forgiving sin. Tulad ng nakita natin sa kwento ng pinagaling niyang may kapansanan. And not only that, by paying for sin so that it's already paid for and you no longer have to pay for it, He takes away sin and the issue of sin in our lives. Tapos may mga tao pa, Pastor, please preach against sin. God is holy. Condemn everybody is committing sin. Jesus already took sin away. Once in a while, we talk about it to appreciate our freedom, to appreciate the kindness and goodness of God, and to inspire us to live upright lives. But do not expect me to use the pulpit to always bring up the issue of sin. Because Jesus took it away. Tapos balik ka ng balik. Jesus takes away sin by removing the law that makes people sinful. Kung laging yung law, ang laman ng utak mo, lagi ka ring sinful, yun ang ending. How will Jesus take away sin if Jesus will always bring up and implement all the laws that He already came to replace with just one law and commandment, the command to love? Hindi compatible ang law at ang love. Hindi compatible ang old traditions of the temple and the new teaching of Jesus that is power. Pag na-reconcile natin sa utak natin, maiintindihan natin kung sino si Jesus. Pero nung nagtuturo si Jesus niyan, that He was the bread from heaven, ang dami hindi nakaintindi, nag-alisan, ay ayaw namin ang teaching mo. Si Jesus na ay nagtuturo, nilayasan pa eh. Kasi ang gusto ng tao, yung dating laman na ng utak niya, i-reinforce mo lang. Ayaw niya magbago ng isip. But Romans 12 says, be changed by the renewing of your mind. Hindi ka lalaya pag hindi na bago ang shape ng iyong utak. Hindi ka magpapalaya ng kapwa pag hindi mo binago ang shape ng iyong utak. 
Jesus came to take away sin, not to put it in the center of our lives, not to make it the usapan all the time, not to make it the standard of daily life. He took away sin. And Jesus took away sin by changing the topic from condemnation to justification. From being dirty to being cleansed. From being an outsider to being children of God. Psalm 103 verse 12, Nung paman, yan ang gusto ng Diyos. Hindi lang sinusunod ng temple. Kaya ipinadala patuloy si Jesus. How far has the Lord taken our sins from us? Farther than the distance from the east to the west. Ganon gusto ng Ama, nakalayo ang usapan at epekto ng kasalanan. Inilayo niya kung gaano kalayo ang silangan sa kanluran. Tapos ikaw naman, lahat na lang ng issue, laging sin ang topic mo, binabalik mo. Inilayo na nga ng Ama, nilalapit mo na naman. Hindi ibig sabihin na mabuhay ka doon sa kasalanan. Pero ang truth is, marami ng dating kinoconsider nilang kasalanan, inalis ni Jesus yung kamandag nun. Binayaran na niya. Kung totoo ang kasalanan man, binayaran. At yung hindi naman kasalanan, nagpinagmumuka lang kasalanan ng reliyon, ibinunyag ni Jesus. Ah, oh, kasalanan pala magtrabaho sa sabat, ha? So, nagtrabaho siya na nagtrabaho sa sabat, ipinakita niya, hindi kasalanan niya, nakala niya lang. Kasalanan palang kumain ng kung ano-ano. So sila, sabi ni Jesus, ang mahalaga yung lumalabas sa ibig, hindi yung kinakain mo, papasok. So, ang dami nilang akala, kasalanan, hindi naman pala. Gano'ng karami sa buhay niyo at buhay nating lahat, ang inaakala natin kasalanan, hindi naman pala. Dapat tayong lumaya doon because Jesus takes away sin. Huwag ma tulog, mahimbing sa mga dating pag-iisip kahit ang pag-iisip na yun ang galing sa religion, reviewin ang lahat sa lain sa Jesus filter. Maraming maraming pahirap sa ating isip at loob, di dapat. Kaya awang-awa sa atin ng Ama, ipinadala si Jesus. Sabi ng Ama, kinakawawa kayo ng relihiyon, kinakawawa kayo ng isang katerbang mga lo, napakarami mga bagay na hindi nyo naman masusunod, lagi tuloy kayong guilty. Here is my son, let him pay for all the real sins, and let him reveal to you what you think is sinful but is not. Dapat rebuhin. 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Of course, ito ibagay dun sa mga hindi pa nagkakaroon ng one-time, big-time confession to God. Pero pag nangyari na, anak na ng Diyos, hindi na dapat ganun kalaki ang issue. Once again, hindi natin sinasabing yung talagang sin ay hindi sin, kundi baka naman nakala mo sin lang, tapos nagiging slave ka tuloy sa pagsunod, pag-aralang mabuti. Ano ba talaga ang turo ng Diyos? At kung talagang sin nga, even by godly standards through Jesus, eh di ba paid then by the blood of Jesus? Eh di ba? We are cleansed with the blood of Jesus nga. Kaya magpapasalamat ka eh. Gagaanang yung loob at magiging mas mabait ka sa kapwa. Kasi ikaw man, naunawa mo yung bait sa'yo ng Diyos. So the work of God forgives and purifies. So that is what we should do. We should forgive and purify people with the love of Jesus. 1 John 1.7 is very, very interesting. Hardly understood kahit lagi nang inuungkat-ungkat at binabanggit-banggit. Sabi dito, if we walk in the light, and of course, you know that Jesus is the light. It means, if we do not hide. If we do not hide who we are. If we do not hide our truth. If we do not hide even our warts and our wounds. If we walk in the light, also means if we let the light of God in Jesus cleanse us. Because light disinfects. Kahit sa science, sa patunayan na, na ang light can cleanse, can disinfect. Yung mga matatanda nung araw, may mga banggirahan tayo facing the east, doon sila nagbibilad ng mga plato, ng mga baso, mga kutsara, because I believe na pag naarawan, lumilinis. And there is truth in that. Light disinfects. Jesus is light. So, 1 John 1.7 says, If we walk in the light, if we do not hide, if we let the light of God cleanse us, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. How do you get purified? By not hiding. 
by exposing your true self to God and let God cleanse you through the blood of Jesus and let the light of Jesus be your strength not your own performance think you know, if we walk in the light we have fellowship with one another ibig sabihin, we have commonality pag lumabas ka mula sa dilim lumabas ka doon ito ako ito yung tinatawag na kasalanan ko ito yung kamalian ko sabi ng iba ay ako rin ay ako rin now we have fellowship with one another pare-pareho lang pala naman tayo meron yan so pare-pareho tayong kailangan natin ang pagpapatawad ng Diyos through Jesus kailangan natin yung cleansing through the blood or in this case through the light of Jesus sabi niya I am the light of the world the light the blood purifies if we do not hide but why do people hide because the religious establishment will punish them for being truthful. The religious establishment will punish people if they show their true lives, true selves, true faces, true wounds, true hurts, true weaknesses. They will be excluded. So people are forced into hiding in the dark. People are forced to live double lives, one life for the Sunday church and another life na pangkatoo, because the church will punish them for what the church thinks are imperfections and sins. Kaya galit na galit si Jesus sa hypocrisy. People are forced into hypocritical existence because of judgment, because of exclusion done by the religious. But the light, the blood purifies if we do not hide. Or said in a better way, deeper way, the light and blood purifies so there is no need to hide. So, oh, ikaw kulang ka, ikaw kulang ka lang ka. Pinuno na ako ni Jesus. May kulang pa ako sa tingin mo. I'm not hiding. Pinuno ako ni Jesus. What you should see the blood, is the blood of Jesus that cleanses me. What you should see is the love of God that fills me. You should not see the gaps and the kulang and the warts. What you should see is God's grace at work in me. So you don't have to hide. You walk in the light because Jesus is light. There is no need to hide. If church people have their hearts in the right places, that they will be supportive of one another, loving to each other, caring, nurturing, that their attention and companionship is restorative rather than judgmental, no one will hide. So habang mga tao ay nagtatago pa, takot pa, ibig sabihin, hindi pa nagiging totoo ang pagiging makahesus ng isang kapatiran. Kailangan pa nilang magtago, natatakot sila sa kapwa nila, mananampalataya. Jesus came to set people free from sin. From the power of sin, from condemnation. Biro mo, hindi ka pa kinokondem ng Diyos, hindi ka pa dyan na-judge, hindi na-judge ka na araw-araw ng kapwa mo. Hindi ang nagpapahirap sa iyo yung kapwa mo. Jesus came to set people free from that. And Jesus came to set people free from sickness because of sin. Sickness caused by guilt and fear. Many scientists are already doing a lot of studies on this. The relationship between physical illness and religious guilt. And they are seeing very, very disturbing connections. Kaya mas maraming religyoso, mas maraming psychological imbalances. Kasi laging hindi nila ma-reconcile yung reality nila at yung expectation ng religion. Jesus bridged the gap. Yung kulang mo pinuno, yung dumi mo nilinis, yung kasalanan mo pinatawad, kaya dapat balance ka na. Grace not achieved by works. And because of the blood of Jesus, the burden is lifted. Suffering gives way to praise. Just like in the case of that paralytic. Jesus does not condemn. Jesus forgives. Why do many church people, why are they in the business of condemnation? That is not the business of Jesus. John 8, 10 to 11, Jesus stood up and said to her, the woman caught in adultery, Woman, where are they? Is there no one to condemn you? She said, no one, sir. Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, don't sin anymore. Hindi siya kinundem. Pero sinabihan, 
May kasalanan ka, tigilan mo. But I will not condemn you. When people condemn a sin, usually they have a target. Kaya kami sa inyo mga taong sobrang pastor, mag-preach po kayo, mag-preach po kayo against adultery. Nangangaliwa ba asawa mo, sister? Kung po, pumunta na lang kayo sa akin mag-asawa. Huwag na natin idama yung buong church sa issue na to. Kasi alam niyo yung mga tao kung minsan galit sa isang kasalanan, hindi naman talaga galit lang sila sa isang taong, ganun yung kasalanan. So gusto niya, bombahin mo ng bombahin yung kasalanan na yun para tamaan siya. Pero ang daming collateral damage. Mayroong mga pastor, ba't hindi po kayo nagpipreach, nag-altar call, nag-evangelize every Sunday? We do that sa Sunday school. Kaya dapat yung mga first time guests, yung mga kailangan ng salvation, eh, pa-attend din nyo. Anim na klase yan, may graduation pa pagkatapos. Tinetest ka pa kung naintindihan mo nga. Pero alam nga na maglinggo-linggo, mag-preach ako ng salvation. May tatlong bisita. May libu-libong dati nang nandito. Ilong yasis nila kailangan madinig yun. So we have a specialized session for these people. Bring your guests to Sunday school. Pero kayo mga iba, gusto bombahin po natin ang buong city kasi may isang terrorist dyan. Ba't di ba lang hanapin yung isa na yun at siya na lang ang pulong mo? Itatamay mo ang lahat. Kailangan merong focus. Marami kasing madadamay. Ayaw ni Jesus ng ganun. Sabi niya, I want you to rest. To be restful. I want you to enjoy a peaceful life. Romans 2.1 Some of you accuse others of doing wrong. But there is no excuse for what you do. When you judge others, you condemn yourselves. Because you are guilty of doing the very same thing. Ay, hindi po. Ay, hindi po kasalanan yung kasalanan nito. Pero may iba ka rin kasalanan. Tama. Meron po. Ay, di ganun din yung kasalanan lang lahat yan. So when you condemn a sinner, you condemn yourself. Judgmental people burn bridges. Do not burn the bridge over which you too must pass. The bridge of grace. The bridge of forgiveness. The bridge of kindness. Because you too need to cross that bridge. Hindi dahil lang may tatlong taong ayaw mo makatawid doon, gigibain mo na yung tulay, pati ikaw hindi makakatawid. Jesus does not afflict. He comforts. Why are so many Christians in the business of afflicting others instead of comforting? Ang ating walang kamatay ang favorite verses, Matthew 11, 28 to 30. This is the mission statement of Jesus. If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I'll give you rest. Take the yoke I give you, put it on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear. This burden is light. Yan ang gusto ni Jesus para sa atin. But many Pharisees, baligtad, they afflict. Why do many Christianities place burdens on people's shoulders, place stress on one another? Why are many Christians so very much unlike Christ? Kaya sabi ni Gandhi, I like your Christ. But I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. At mayroong katotohanan ito na sampal sa mga taong nananalig daw kay Jesus. Jesus does not wound or hurt. He heals. And why do so many of us wound one another? Especially those that we consider to be sinful. Anong karapatan natin? na sumugat sa puso ng isang taong iniisip natin makasalanan, eh ang business ni Jesus ay magpagaling, tapos ikaw nag, nanunugat, so nasa kanino ka ba talagang panig? Dapat magkalinawan. Jesus does not scare or trouble. He does not vex. He gives peace. Tapos yung magte-text sa'yo, yung magpo-post sa maraming kristyano, ang mga news na nakakatakot, nakakadisturb. Jesus is in the business of giving peace. John 14, 27, I give you peace. The kind of peace that only I can give. It isn't like the peace that this world can give. So don't be worried and afraid. Why do so many Christians trouble one another? Ang konti-konti ni Jesus sa Christianity, kaya lagi natin ina-emphasize. Ay, ganun na naman ba ang teaching ni Jesus? Ni Pastor Jesus na naman, Eh, dalawang taon, libong taon na kasi na nawawala yung Jesusness eh. Kailangan talagang pagtrabahuhan para ibalik. To put Jesus back in His church. 
the work of Jesus includes does not exclude. Walang puwera kay Jesus. Kahit nga yung demon possessed, pinuntahan pa niya sa kuweba. Tapos ang mga Kristiyano ang hilig magpuwera, maglabel. Napaka-konti ng pagiging makahesus sa loob ng Christianity. John 1.12 Yet to all who did receive Him, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right, right ito ha, to become children of God. Bakit mo siya tinitiwalag? Bakit mo siya ayaw isali? Eh kasi ganito siya, ganun siya. Teka, tinanggap ba niya si Jesus? Naniwala ba siya kay Jesus? Oo, di anak siya ng Diyos. Pareho lang kayong anak. Anong karapatan mo? John 6.37 Everything and everyone that the Father has given me, sabi ni Jesus, will come to me and I won't turn any of them away. Wala akong tatanggihan. Basta gusto. Basta gusto lumapit. Walang puwera. Basta gusto. Many Pharisees are in the business of exclusion. Why do so many Christians exclude other people? Hindi yan, Jesus style. The work of Jesus loves, does not hate. And yet many Christian congregations are in the business of hating. They label people, they classify people and hate certain types of people. That is not the business of Jesus. 1 John 4, 7-8 Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. So kung hindi ka maibigin at maligdad pa nga ang selan-selan mo, marami kang pinandidirihan, marami kang ayaw, marami kang kinakamuhian, tulad ka ng Pharisees, many Pharisees teach and promote hatred. Laging meron tatargetin na group, tatargetin na tao, tatargetin na kung sino-sino, tapos yun ang giging object of hatred. At pasimuno ang maraming Christian churches sa business na ito. The work of Jesus loves us at hate. 1 John 4.20 Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or a sister, is a liar. We should be in the business of loving people of opening our hearts, our doors, even to people we do not like. Because when people believe in Jesus, God gives them the right to be His children. And you as a child of God, has no bigger rights than other children of God. Pare-pareho lang tayong anak ng Diyos. If a Christian hates, if a Christian teaches and promotes hatred, that person is not of God. Yun ang sabi ng verse. Hindi ko anong version ng Bible ang daladala mo, hindi ko ano ang statement of faith mo. No. Isa lang ang litmus test. Loving ka ba? Yun lang. The challenge is to understand Jesus. Pagsikapan, pagtrabahuhan na maunawa si Jesus. Hindi siya naunawa ng napakaraming mga taong nakarinig sa Kanya. Kaya siya pinatay. Hindi siya naunawa ng marami niyang tagasunod, kaya yung mga iba nag-alisan pa. Dapat nating unawain kasi ibang iba. Hindi pwedeng pagsabayin yung mga dati ng nakasanayan na pag-iisip at ang very revolutionary, very new teaching of Jesus that is proven with power. The forgiveness of Jesus heals. So are we healed? Are we healing fast? And do we allow other people to heal? Through and by the love and power of Jesus, let us forgive others and help them heal. Whether or not the sin that you assign to them is real or imagined, the ending is the same. Just forgive. Huwag mo na ipagpilitan na totoo siyang makasalanan. Okay, totoo rin tayong makasalanan. God forgive us, so forgive. Eh, paano pa kung hindi naman pala totoo ang kasalanan? Guni-guni mo lang na kasalanan yun. Iti doble ang pananagutan mo sa Diyos. And very importantly, forgive yourself. Be easy on yourself. Madalas ang effect ng religion and religiosity sa tao, self-flagellation, self-judgment, self-condemnation, 
nasa yung peace nasa yung rest kung gaano gusto ni Jesus na mo ang kapwa sabi niya love others as you love yourself meaning love yourself and love others in the same way kailangan kasali ka sa pinapatawad mo kailangan kasali ka sa tinatanggap mo para ang lahat maunawa ang lawa lalim ang ganda ng pag-ibig ng Diyos through Jesus Lord teach us to understand that we are forgiven that we are forgiven yesterday today and tomorrow and teach us to extend the same forgiveness to our fellow humans that we also forgive them for yesterday today and tomorrow so everybody lives in a climate of forgiveness and love that gives rest and peace which is what you want for us here and in eternity pagbulay-bulayan pag-isipan ng practical na paraan ng pagsunod sa katuroan ni Jesus na ito Lord continue to bless your, your people as we hear your voice making personal messages to us be with the Lord in silent reflection